gosh, love my Razer. See that it's Razer mechanical keyboard. It sounds so clicky and great. It's so good. It's so good. Here's my mouse. And the what's this? Glorses? What's that? What's Glorses? What? What? How does this keyboard sound so good? So not this junk. Where can I get one of these? Uh, ducky. Yeah. How much does that? Two hundred dollars. What? No, 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 no. Let's go back to Amazon. <laughs> Enter. I want something hot swap because I'm lazy and scared of heat. And then I won't need to take out a loan just to afford a keyboard. What is this, American healthcare? Nah, nah, nah. Okay, okay, okay. There's two, two keyboards that I was thinking of RK Royal Clutch. Oh, spelled it wrong. And the LTC nimble back. But like, what do I want? I got both. Okay, so which one is better? Hey guys, this pastel's here. I wanted to demonstrate the difference between two of the big budget kings and all that they have to offer. Uh, as you hopefully got from the intro, I'm gonna compare these boards for, you know, giggles. It's not really gonna be anything too big. And to help the random person who's starting the hobby just as I did, it'll be great. Okay, but disclaimer. Both of these boards have been modded with a simple foam mod and the stabilizers have been lubed and tuned just to show how these boards are very similar and how they can compete on, you know, similar circumstances. However, I have used these boards, both of them. I've used both of them without any mods and I gotta say it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nothing amazing. And again, I'm new to this, and I'm helping other people out more than anything. There it is. The Roy Boy. RK61, I don't know, something like, oh wait, 68. RK68. Ah. <sighs> Man, when I got this boy, it was so great. I didn't have to deal with all of the click and clack of the <coughs> sickening razor green switches. Ew. Ew. Ooh. Razor greens. The Black Widow from the Dark Ages. And this board introduced me and hooked me into the hobby. I guess for better or worse worse because my bank account's gonna suffer a whole lot and then uh there's also the nimble back there she is there she be man look at those keys extremely similar to each other it's almost like they have the same cheap key sets both of these have an option to come with brown or blue switches but the Royal has the upper hand offering reds. Wow. And for whatever reason, it came with Gateron reds. I mean, see this is Gat reds right there, man. And you pull it out and you show it and says, Gateron. You can see it. Gateron. Wow. Enough of that. Doesn't matter. These came with off brand browns 
I don't really know what to call them. I couldn't really read the brand. So I'm just not going to. That's just what's going to happen. So to do a fair comparison, we're going to test them both with the Gat Reds and the off-brand Browns. Just to have some kind of similarity between the sound tests. Okay, let's talk accessories. Besides the obvious that I've already stated, the functions they come with are really, really similar. Arcade Royal, you got the Bluetooth, the Blues Clues, and you can connect up to five devices. Look at that, it says five right there. And there's nothing else to look at, really. There's the on switch. While the nimble bag comes with these lift two USB A's. Wow. So nice and pretty. Uh, other than that, they're pretty much the same. I mean, got similar keycaps, got similar switches, they got similar this, not really similar to that though. All right, so if you look at the angle of typing of both of these, see that this one is fairly shallow. Uh, but compared to the nimble pack, Well, I guess it's not really that noticeable here. It really does make a difference. But like a pretty big difference too. If you just eyeball it, the angle of typing is a lot higher on the nimble back than it is on the Roy boy. But uh, I feel like typing on the nimble back is a little bit easier. I can be a little more consistent with the keystrokes of like, what, 60 something words per minute, nothing too special. This is alright, and this also. Check these out. On the NTC nimble back. Got the little feeties. Wow. Look at those little feeties. Come on, come on. That is actually how hard it is to get out. But you can put it the angle up to a uh, God, no, please, why on earth would you type like this? You're probably gonna get arthritis or tendinitis. Also, the nibble bag has these cool little lights included. Look at that. These don't have any lights or anything. Also, check this out. Look, Ma, no hands. Wow. This just comes right off. That. I guess I could put right back on. Cool. Can I do that with the arcade board? No, it looks like it's one solid hunk of plastic. Ugh, enough stock stuff. Let's talk modability. Uh, just like the rest of the video, they're kind of the same. They have some foam in them. I put them there wasn't that hard it's like six six screws and like four or five screws so nothing too bad at all but uh if you buy the arcane royal clutch something like these nice banana split switches you know this cherry mx star one is pretty nice you know you're gonna want a pair of these flush cutters why? Well, if you look inside here, you can see that there's no LED. No LED at all. Because it's been flushed cut out. You know why? Because this board is mostly made for Gateron switches. Do not be fooled. Even though it can support 3-pin and 5-pin, the freaking mountain of an LED that's put in this just causes all these switches not to fit. So, if you're like me and don't care for RGB, then that's fine. You can always flush cut them out. Good old snip snip. But if you're a big fan, then uh, keep Cataron switches. <laughs> don't be fooled. The LTC, however, doesn't have that problem. The LEDs are like flush in the PCB, so there's no compatibility issues, which is really, really nice. 
So I guess we'll do the sound test. So we're gonna start off with these nice Gatteron lights. Of course, just like my man man Shubes, Tiki test all the way. Get in there. Come on. Yeah. Enough for that switch, we'll go on to the good old uh oh <laughs> to the good old browns. <laughs> what happened there? Ooh. Wow, that's a lot of work. It's not really that much work. Well, that sure was fun. That was a great, uh, what a great sound test. Good, good sound, good sounds, good. But uh, as you can see, I found that the Nibbleback actually has a deeper tone to it. It has a more thocky tone, as you would say in this community, I guess. Even with the reds and the browns in, yeah, this one has a deeper tone to it. It has a more resonant thock that the RK Royal Clutch just doesn't have. This is a more tick, 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 tick sound. This is a more thock sound. So take that as you will. I mean, this even has lubed and film switches. This one doesn't. And it's more of a, a deeper sound than this board. So, which one wins? Tell him for it. Just kidding, he's a stuffed animal. He can't say anything. Get out of here. Just kidding, I love you for it. Love you. In my opinion, the Nimbleback wins. Just because the two USB-A's and the deeper resonant sound of it. And also these, and the compatibility it has with multiple switches. I'm like the only Gatterons that you can fit in this one without taking out all the LEDs, which was a hassle. But really, advantages too. I mean, it has Bluetooth, which this one doesn't have. It's more compact and probably built for gamers rather than the Nimblebacks. Mostly catered towards the typist. That's why it has this little, little thing right here. With your little function keys, you know, it's all really nice and all. So it, I would choose the nimble back, but of course, the royal clutch has advantages. So take the information in this video and start your destructively rectangular hobby and run like the wind. <coughs> and don't forget to like and subscribe. <coughs>